Audi and Tubal Cain, which do you like better, Wilton or Colombian vices? I'll be right back to tell you what I think. You know, I'm a man with many vices, and the double entendre is intended. But I have long favored Colombian vices, maybe because my dad had one, I'm not really sure, but I do think they're a better vice, just a personal preference and opinion, I know. But let's explore the differences of the two different brands. These are both 3 inch wide jaws, that's how we measure the size of a vice. They both weigh 19 pounds, isn't that unusual? This one is on a swivel base, this one is not. It probably was available with a swivel base, I'm not sure. And I have uh, another Colombian vice, and I have another Wilton vice for that matter, and I've owned many other Wilton vices in the past. Wilton vices are often called bullet vices for obvious reasons, and they have achieved near cult status in the United States. They certainly are the most prolific producers of vices, and they have been since 1941, so valued that I've seen men get into virtual fistfights over them at auctions. As I said, Wilton vices have been around since 1941. Colombian vices a little bit earlier, 1929, but I believe that the management at Wilton also loved them so much that in fact they bought out the company in the 1990s, so now if you want to buy either a Wilton or a Colombian, you can get them from the same manufacturer, and it's in Schiller Park, Illinois. Wilton has a great website, so check that out, and they have an extensive selection of products, including C-clamps and other vices, such as milling machine vices, and a few tools there that you uh, might be surprised that they make or offer, so Check that out. Most vice manufacturers, including Colombian, used a ram that was either square or rectangular, whereas Wilton was a leader, or probably the originator, or maybe the only manufacturer of vices with a round ram, which was no doubt much cheaper and easier to manufacture because it could all be done on lathes or milling machines, and it's easy to make round holes and a round ram is difficult to do this. Although they're both 3 inch vices, let's compare some of the other dimensions. For instance, on the Colombian, the distance from the top of the jaw down to here is 3 inches. Whereas, big difference here, you've only got about 2 and a quarter inches. That's a big advantage. If you like a low profile vise, Wilton is your baby. Look, that's only a little bit, well, five and a half inches, whereas this one is six and a half inches, and you can knock off even another inch on that if you take off the swivel base. Both vices sport handles that are seven inches long, but the Colombian is one half diameter, and this is a little less at 433. All vices have a little pounding area on the back, which generally call it the anvil. The Wilton is pretty small at one and a half by one and three quarters. The Wilton a lot larger, one and five eighths by two and a half. But one thing you have to watch for in a big shop where people do a lot of hammering is that some of them, them will hammer back here that is not an anvil, it is not meant to be struck. I have seen several that are split. In their advertising literature, Wilton makes a big deal over the fact that they have four mounting holes, whereas most other vices, including Colombian, only have three. These, however, are larger in diameter, a full half inch. These more like three-eighths. However, if you remove the swivel base, you're down to just two. Notice that on this vise they use an acorn nut. Some swivel vices use a handle. I prefer this because the handles are always in the way and very seldom do I ever swivel a vise. I do like these diamond pattern jaws. They give a nice grip. 
But what I don't like about the Colombian, that these jaws are pinned into place, and it's very hard to even see the pins. Perhaps you can see one of them right here. I actually have never removed any, but you would have to drive them out, I assume, to replace the vice jaws. But looking at it from the side, you can see that they are very well made and that they, uh, they reach into the body of the vise. So that is good construction. Now looking at the Wilton, and the ones I had at school had uh, diamond jaws, but I didn't like some of them. They were so sharp when they were new that we ha had to uh, put them on the surface grinder and take a little bit of that off because the kids would damage their work because they would tighten it up too much. I love the way that Wilton fastens them with screws. They're very easy to get out, but looking at it from the side, you can see they are not keyed into the vise themselves. Now, Wilton makes a wide variety of vise jaws, caps. Now, this is the wrong size, but they make them in aluminum and I think nylon and other various metals and various sizes, most of them magnetic. Both brands open to about the same distance, which is four and a half inches. And maybe this is a little less. Well, it's hard to decide just how far out you can bring these before it either falls out or lacks strength or could be damaged. But I would say they're about the same. Maybe I just didn't move this one out far enough. Vices are very often abused because desperate men use them in desperate times. They pound on them, they beat on them, they heat them, they weld them, and they press things with them. And one problem I had at school with two different Wilton vices, and they were larger ones than this, perhaps four inch, I don't remember exactly, but somehow or another the kids put a large piece of work in here and cranked her down as tight as you can get and bent this beam such that the vise could not be used. Now it wasn't a real big bend but it would jam and when you laid a straight edge on it you could see that it was bent. I got the Wilton representative to the school one time, showed it to him and he didn't seem to care. Now that's 45 years ago. Are you aware that Wilton made a vise that was called the power screw vise? It was in fact a hydraulic vise. So there was a hydraulic mechanism in there and there were two of them at the high school when I came and they were quite new. I think it was the previous teacher probably in the previous year that had bought them. But I didn't like them at all because the kids could not seem to understand how to use them. And because of that, and I think they failed shortly anyway, they came with a very small handle. And since you couldn't tighten them up properly unless you used the hydraulic mechanism correctly, they would beat on them or whatever and the vice handles, puny, puny little handles, were bent. So after two or three years of suffering with those, I put them into the dumpster and bought new ones. I was unable to find any information in their old catalogs about the power screw, so I'm going to show you pictures of the patent drawings for that and the patent number on there in case you want to check that out. This is page one of the patent drawing for the Wilton power screw. Note the number in the upper right hand corner. This is page two of the power screw. Now I will rotate the page in the horizontal position for a better view. You can see that it's a rather complex mechanism, probably cost a lot to build. Here's a catalog picture of the Wilton power screw vise. The end of the screw was clearly marked power screw. Now Wilton vices are all marked as to when they were manufactured. All of the vices that were made during the Second World War, because they started in 1941, as I understand it, went to the military. And here's the date on this, much older than I would have thought, September 1945, the war was over. The Wilton vise has a key, so it's very accurately made. 
there's very little wobble in the vise jaw. And another great feature of these vices that the end of the screw here has a cap on it that prevents dirt, grit, grime, grease, and chips from getting in there where the Columbian is packed full of debris. I thought I'd check the play with the dial indicator so the indicator point is up against the jaw. This is the Welton now. And there is about 30, 30 thousandths which is one thirty-second of an inch. And that, I would say, is very uh, well expected tolerance. That's not bad at all. Let's see what the Columbian does. Although the Columbian seems very sloppy, in fact, it's just about exactly the same thirty thousandths as the Wilton. So they both have a very tight tolerance. You, you know, you got to expect this. May I digress just a little bit? Now, if these videos are too boring, let me know and I'll stop making this kind. But I think everyone in the free world knows that Wilton made a wide variety of work positioners, some of them equipped with vices. A lot of these were used in the aerospace or electronic industry. But that's not what I really wanted to talk about. I think that Wilton C-clamps are the best C-clamps ever devised by man. Now, I'm not saying that the frame and the screw is a whole lot different than an Armstrong or Williams or one of the other premium names because they're forged and you can see that's a 3-inch Wilton. But what is so great about them is this little perma-pad which absolutely does not come off and in fact is what high school teachers would call student proof. They, it was patented and there's a little ring in there and I don't care how you beat on it you're not gonna knock it off of there and you can buy replacements well why would you need a replacement it won't come off yes you might have a Jorgensen or some other clamp that you've lost the swivels on. You look at anybody's rack of C-clamps and you can see a bunch of them without a swivel. If you need to replace them Get the perma pad. I'll show you a little picture of that out of the catalog, but it's an extremely bad picture. Feel free to pause your video to read that about the perma pad. And they came in a variety of sizes as replacements. So this is a brilliant design because this can be turned on a lathe very accurately and relatively easy easily. And this can be bored and then of course it's broached. Now the nut in there is a very long nut and it's perfectly in alignment with the Acme screw which it is not in most other vices and I'll show you in a minute. And there of course is the key seat and the key that prevents it from rotating. Perfectly clean in there except for dirty grease. No chips. And there's a cutaway showing the straight line pole, a lifetime system. And that's what they mean by a straight line pole, or push. Have you ever been driving down the highway and you see a service truck that is a plumber or something of that nature where they have a big old Wilton vice mounted onto the bench? And you think to yourself, I sure would like to have that vice, but I think they weld the nuts so you can't get them off or they'd be stolen at a motel. You often see them at motels. And uh, I don't know if you're aware, but they do make a weatherproof model that can be mounted on a truck and of course it's not going to get uh, ruined with our Illinois salt. Now when you disassemble a vise that has the rectangular type slide bar, if someone has been beating out here and mushroomed it, you're going to have to file that or dress it in order to, in order to get it apart. But you can visualize this isn't particularly hard to machine, but to get that tolerance would be kind of tough. And it's machined on all four sides and inside you can see the screw. So to me that would cost more to do. I may be wrong. And it's certainly difficult to make a rectangular hole like that. Of course it would be cast in there and you can see that it is not square all the way through so they only have to machine the front and the back and of course the bottom. 
and there's the nut. And you can see that this is not a straight line pull design like the, Wil the Wilton. And there has to be a little bit of play in there for it to align. So that's probably designed in there. And that nut is not as long as the one in the Wilton. However, I've never really had problems with these. And every one had a serial number. Now this is my everyday vise that you've seen in countless videos. It's a 4 inch Columbia and I'm going to take that off the bench and compare it to another Wilton that I have, a slightly larger Wilton. Now meet the big boys. This vise came off of my workbench out in the garage, garage number one. This one again right off of the corner right here. Now of course this stuff's all used. I never could afford one of these brand new but Bubba long time ago bent this handle as you can see. Some of the Wilton vices had a nice rubber washer here that would prevent a blood blister because if you have small children fiddling around the shop or even freshmen here's what the <laughs> here's what the kids would do while you're giving a demonstration and I you know I, this is funny try not to take this as if I am criticizing the kids but you got kids standing around a bench, we got eight vices and they're all doing this during the demonstration. Now that would annoy even you. But if that rubber washer is on there, prevents most of that. And Wilton also made a beautiful line of woodworking vices and we had those in the wood shop at the high school. Although this vise looks a lot bigger than this one, and by the way, this weighs 48 pounds with the swivel base, and the Colombian weighs 36 pounds. But this is a three and a half inch, this is a four inch, even though they look to be about the same size. But the beauty of this one is it has the pipe jaws, and you've seen me use this in a video where I did some pipe threading. Now the tables are turned here. We have four and a quarter inch depth and on the Columbian three and three quarters. So this is deeper. And the tables continue to be turned. I'm not going to measure it but the anvil area on this vise is considerably larger than the one on the Columbian. You can see where people have beat on this one back here. And apparently even some saw marks. Bubba is present in every shop. Do you have Bubba in your shop? I like to mount a vise on the corner of a bench rather than in the middle but uh, that might be a uh, personal preference also. But another thing that I want to tell you here is that I see that most vices are mounted incorrectly. So if a vise is mounted like this and you want to put a long piece of round stock in there perhaps to thread it, it's going to strike the table. A vise should be mounted outboard like this so that the work, no matter how long, will clear the table. Owned many, many more bench vices in my life than what you see here today, and I do have two others out in the other garage. I don't think I'm going to show you, but I got rid of most of them. You know, I had so many, it doesn't make any sense. You saw my video on how many drill press vices I have now. Is that crazy? But often at an auction, I would buy a vice and it would be mounted on a bench. And I could not get it off. Sometimes the uh, you needed wrenches of all different sizes or it was just buggered up. You couldn't get it off. So I usually carried either a hacksaw or a wood cutting saw or I would buy one for 50 cents right there or borrow one. And I would saw that entire corner off of the, people thought I was nuts, off of the bench because I had bought the bench as well. They often sold it, sold it as a unit. So that was my way of getting it off and getting it off fast, crazy as it sounds. Well, as I wrap up this video, I'm going to do one other thing that I usually don't do, and that is to clean these up a bit, mask them off, and give them one of my superficial paint jobs here with uh, the Rust-Oleum gray, dark gray gloss, and see how they look. 
In fact, this little Wilton belongs to my grandson, Jordan. I gave it to him when he was 10 years old. Well, the Wilton is all cleaned up, masked, and ready to paint. Upon uh, cleaning up the screw, well, I got a little more to go, there is no perceivable wear. I wish I could say the same thing for my body because this thing's only two years younger than me. Now I want to emphasize this is not a restoration. This is just an Earl Scheib special with the difference that I mask mine. Let's compare the two screws of the vices while I'm at it and I have them opened here. This is the Wilton. Notice it's about an inch and a half shorter. They're both 5 8 diameter. The Wilton is much finer at six threads per inch. The Columbia, Columbian is four threads per inch. And they are held into the vise in a different manner. Wilton uses this uh, little, I don't know what we call it, yoke. And Columbian uses a collar and then the collar slides up here, the vise is in between here, and it uses a little set screw like that to hold this in place. And by the way, both of these threads are square threads, not Acme. I might also point out that on the Columbian we have a washer here with some ears on it and one side has a thrust washer that is it looks like it's brass possibly oil light but it's pretty badly worn I'll paint any car for Well, it's a day later, and the paint is dry, and I'm ready to do the unmasking. Okay, I think the vices are looking great in their new coat of gray paint. The only wear that I see on the Colombian vice that is troublesome is right here. I'm sure that many of you were troubled by the fact that I did not mask off the anvil area on either vice. And I did that on purpose. I intend to dress it up just a little bit with the cutter on the bridge port. And of course the same thing goes for the Wilton. And now to reassemble the Wilton and I like that they went the extra mile with the dowel pen that goes into the center of the jaws.
And there we are, two beautiful vices, not restored, but refreshed and brought back to uh, great utility. Which is your favorite, Wilton or Colombian? And of course, there are many other brands. Put it in the comments what your favorite brand is. Some of them are no longer available, but are beautiful old vices. I particularly like that big Charles Parker I've got out in the garage. So what will it be? A Wilton? Available, of course, in many different sizes. American made. And I believe they're still made in America. I hope they are. Or Colombian. I hope you enjoyed the video.